make sure we got audio here. What is up, boyos? Welcome to whatever this is. We need to talk about Netflix, okay? I, I, I'm sure many of you know what's going on with Netflix. Apparently, Netflix is just dying, you know, it's just kind of dying, um, which is sad. We'll get into some articles and stuff in just a minute here, and I'll break down my thoughts on why I think this is happening uh, and what's going on. But first and foremost, it needs to be said, Netflix as a company has changed the landscape of how we digest media, right? Before Netflix, we got movies through Blockbuster, and they killed Blockbuster with the delivery service, right? And we used to consume media through television, and then they killed television through the streaming service. That's all Netflix. But let's get into it, okay? Streaming giant Netflix had a rough week announcing a 200k subscriber loss and experiencing a steep stock price drop. Uh, this comes from Kimberly Potts at uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, Netflix, long sitting atop the streaming world with popular titles like Stranger Things and The Witcher, had a rough week. First, the company reported its first subscriber loss in more than a decade dropping 200,000 subscribers in the first quarter of 2022, followed by a 35% stock price drop. In a letter to shareholders, Netflix put part of the blame for its falling numbers on people sharing their pass passwords for the service with non-paying viewers, but tried to put a positive spin on the situation. Quote, this is a big opportunity as these households are already watching Netflix and enjoying our service, the letter read. Sharing likely helped fuel our growth by getting more people using and enjoying Netflix, and we've always tried to make sharing within a member's household easy, with features like profiles and multiple streams. While these have been very popular, they've created confusion about when and how Netflix can be shared with other households. Let's just stop there for a minute, okay? Password sharing isn't the issue here, okay? Uh, maybe a little bit, but like, it's not. It's not the biggest issue. It's not why they're losing subscribers. You know, so Netflix has come out and said all sorts of crazy things, like they're gonna cut down on sharing passwords and stuff like that. Well, also, we've got here, Netflix is slashing animation amid subscriber drops. Uh, this comes from IGN. Uh, it looks as though Netflix is cutting loose its animated projects after highly publicized subscriber losses. Netflix is putting the brakes on its animation efforts, firing executives, and canceling several highly anticipated shows. According to The Wrap, Netflix's Director of Creative Leadership and Development for Original Animation, Phil Rinda, uh, was let go this week along with several of his staff. Not only that, but several high-profile animated series have now been canceled. And it's just wild to me that they think that's the move. Like, hey, let's cancel animation. That's not it, Netflix. Now, I know what you're saying, Jake. You keep saying, that's not it, that's not it. What is it then? Well, I think it's a few factors. I think it's a few different things, okay? First and foremost, competition is rising, okay? Competition, net, for the longest time, Netflix was the only name in town when it came to streaming, right? It was Netflix or nothing. Well, it's not Netflix or nothing anymore. Now it's Netflix, Disney+, Plus. HBO Max, um, Paramount Plus, Hulu, you know, there, there's so many different streaming services. So there's that. Um, and I would argue a lot of those services are doing Netflix better. Um, I don't want this to come off wrong because Netflix does make a lot of quality content. But while Netflix makes a lot of quality content, there's a lot of crap content as well, right? 
even their interface, you know, we hear about it all the time. People getting stuck on their interface where they end up just looking at what, what, what should I watch for hours rather than actually watching anything. And I think people are getting sick of that. And I think someone who's actually done it really well so far has been Disney, right? Disney has a large back catalog of a lot of different things, but they, they have been very focused on like, Hey, this is our one big thing right now. It's moon Knight, right? Netflix has a million different things coming out. You know, they, they have the shotgun approach, which worked for years, right? Worked for years. But now I think it's it's getting to the point where things are getting lost in the shuffle. They're spending a lot of money on a lot of different projects that may or may not be effective. Um, people aren't so much interested in uh, having a shit ton of programming. Rather, they, they would rather have a lot of good, interesting programming. Now, if we come here and like compare the streaming services, but let's go to new releases, right? We got Russian Doll, which has had zero marketing, but might I add, like I haven't heard any marketing on this. John Wayne Gacy tapes, documentary, interesting. White Hot, The Rise and Fall of Amber Crombie and Finch, might be interesting. Heartstopper, I've never heard of this before. Selling Sunset, like what is this? Pacific Rim, The Black, like what's this? Uh, hold tight. Never heard of this. The Marked Heart. Never heard of this. Oprah and Viola. Okay, that's fine. He's expecting another documentary. Like, these are all things that, like, were announced, like, this week, right? Like, these aren't Van Helsing. Like, what is a lot of this stuff? E.G. Battle Kitten. I mean, we gotta have kids shows, I guess. But, like, look at these kids shows. They're getting an rid of animation to make more shows like this. Like, what? What is this? What is this? Honestly. Crybabies. Like, honestly, what is this? So, yeah. Um, and every once in a while, they have a big hit, like Bridgerton or something like that. Now, I'm only going to compare it to the ones that I actually use, which are Netflix, Disney+, Plus, and HBO Max. Now, if we come over to Disney+, Plus, right? Disney Plus is so simply laid out. Like, if we go back to Netflix, it's so confusing. We got TV shows and, like, just a, an endless sea of, like, what is the connection between some of these things? And, like, there's good stuff on here. Like, I loved Love. Like, it's a great show. But, like, there's so much. Is it cake? What is this? Sorry, I got distracted. Like... But if we go over to Disney Plus, really simply laid out, we've got the Disney section with all the Disney movies. We've got the Pixar section with all the Pixar movies. We've got the Marvel section with all the Marvel movies, the Star Wars section with all the Star Wars stuff, and National Geographic for National Geographic. Now, Disney Plus has a lot of content, surprisingly, like a ton of content. If you scroll down, like there's an endless sea of content on here. But that's a lot of just back catalog stuff. They're not going to push it too, too hard. And they've got it well set up where it's like, here, look, here's some 4K and Ultra HD stuff. Like, it's got nice sections. But really what it's pushing are these two sections right here, right? Recommended for you and new to Disney+. Plus. Uh, right now, they had a huge dump of National Geographic stuff on Disney+. Plus. Um, so you're going to see a lot more than usual being uploaded. But Disney does not have the shotgun approach, okay? Um, really, what Disney's big show has been is Moon Knight. They drop Moon Knight every week. That's the big show. That is what's selling the service right now. There's other stuff. We've got the Proud Family and Better Nate Than Ever or whatever. Some, like, kids shows or whatever. Uh, and, of course, all the National Geographic stuff. Looks like they're starting to upload a bunch of ESPN stuff as well. Um, but, really, it's the few big things that they're pushing here on disney plus versus netflix which is just the shotgun approach just so much crap all the time and then when you when you go within their sections go to the star wars section we've got original star wars stuff we've got movies we've got the series really easy to understand stuff it's really easily laid out 
granted disney has the benefit of just like having massive franchises and they can just sell it all on franchises netflix doesn't have that benefit so what if we go to somewhere that doesn't have that benefit somewhere like hbo max right hbo is also an originals machine right they're pushing original content that's their whole deal uh first and foremost um HBO has a huge string of like amazing new movies that are worth watching. Um, like, look at this. This is a great lineup of movies, and they have it beautifully laid out here. It's like, look at here's all the popular movies. Check it out, right? And then when you go to just add it, of course, we got the Batman, which is like just such a huge movie that just came out. Um, Man of Steel. I really feel like HBO pushes their movies. Because uh, when they're not pushing big movies, big tentpole movies that people love, critically acclaimed movies, popcorn movies, they're pushing their original series. They're building hype for The Flight Attendant right now, Tokyo Vice. Winning Time is just massive right now. People are loving it. And then they have temples like Sesame Street, Last Week Tonight. And then HBO also has different sections that make it easy to get around the website. Uh, they've got the HBO section, which has uh, all the classic HBO shows that everyone loves. The Max Originals, which are like the newer shows. A DC section with all the DC movies. Turner Classic Movies. A uh, bunch of classic films. I love going through this section of the... I love going through this section and just adding things to my queue, like just a ton of classic movies. And I think if Netflix had something like this, like here's a section of just classic movies, right? They have a ton of great movies on Netflix, but the, it's all hidden underneath the mess. They need a system like this that just makes it very easy to navigate. An Adult Swim section, Studio Ghibli, uh, Cartoon Network, Sesame Street, uh, Looney Tunes, all that stuff. And then if we go into Max Originals, right? Just a lot of great stuff in here. We got The Flight Attendant, which people are loving. Minx, I know people are loving this show. Tokyo Vice, I know people are going crazy for this show. And there's just such an amazing back catalog of HBO shows like Curb Your Enthusiasm. Barry, you know, we're in alphabetical mode here, but just a ton of great stuff is on HBO. And there's a ton of great stuff on Netflix as well. It's just all hidden underneath the noise. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I'm not saying HBO or Disney Plus are perfect. I I don't think they're perfect. I think there's a lot of issues with those platforms. But I think those issues are nowhere near the size of the issues Netflix has. And here's an issue that I haven't really touched on. Netflix just keeps raising the prices constantly, just raising the prices to an absurd amount of money. And Disney Plus is really cheap. It's really cheap. HBO Max, it feels premium, but that's because they're releasing nothing but premium content all the time and i'd have to compare prices here let me look it up so a monthly cost for netflix okay you got your basic which includes one screen and no hd so standard def is ten dollars and then if you want high definition with two screens that would be sixteen dollars and for premium which includes HD and Ultra HD, which is like 4K, 4K streaming and four screens, it's 20 bucks. Let's compare that to Disney Plus. Disney Plus, as of right now, is $7.99 a month. That's really cheap. I don't think it's going to last long that it's $7.99. It's a new service. But that's really cheap. And HBO Max is $15 a month without ads or $10 a month with ads. Simple pricing, 
15 bucks a month, not limiting on your screens. And it's a growing service. Uh, I know HBO just grew substantially uh, since the beginning of this year. Uh, I know there's a lot of drama going on with Warner Brothers and being bought out by Discovery and all that stuff, but that is a whole other conversation. Uh, we're just talking about the streaming services here. Um, all that being said, I really hope the best for Netflix. Uh, I think Netflix has made a lot of really great stuff. They're still making great stuff. I loved Power of the Dog. It was a great movie. Marriage Story a few years ago. They have a lot of prestige movies that I love to see. I think it'd be really neat if uh, Netflix started releasing their movies in theaters like HBO does. Like, hey, let's put it in theaters for a few months and then put it on our streaming service. I think that's a great move. I think uh, that's the future of streaming is, hey, let's let's put this in the theaters for three to six months and then we'll put it on our streaming service. So we could sell it again. Like, hey, remember that thing that was super hot a few months ago? Did you miss it? Now you can watch it here. Did you love it? Now you can watch it again. And I think uh, that is something they're finding with the Batman right now on HBO Plus. Excuse me. HBO Max is there was a lot of hype around the Batman. It was only in theaters. A few months later, it comes to streaming. And now everyone's talking about the Batman again. They're like, hey, remember that thing that happened a few months ago? Well, I missed it. Here it is. I think Netflix could do something like that, uh, get the hype building around their movies. I think they need to set up uh, different hubs like Disney and HBO have. I think it's a great asset just to sort of, you know, feed people to the content they want to see. And by God, bring back the star system. <laughs> That'd be neat. Uh, that's all I have to really say about Netflix. Uh, I appreciate you watching this video. Keep it real. I will talk to you later. Make sure you check out the podcast. Um, Last Week in Games. We're live every Monday around 3.30 Arizona time. So check us out. We're going to talk about games. Tons of game stuff coming. And I'm working on a huge project about X-Men right now. So get hyped for that. Thank you. Bye-bye.